Welcome to another Dolphin Communication Project Dolphin Lesson. Today we are going to learn how to draw an orca. Um, and we are joined by Miss Reina, who is going to um, talk us through everything. Um, as usual, Nicole and I are monitoring the chat. So if you are listening to this live, please feel free to submit your questions to the chat. Uh, you can submit those questions to um, everyone or you can submit them directly to Dolphin Communication Project and we will uh, get to those questions at the end. Just a reminder to those of you who are watching live um, that we are recording. So if you don't wanna be visible during the recording, please just keep your own videos off. You will find your microphones muted and so use that chat function. Um, and I'm going to uh, stop my share for the moment um, and let Miss Reina um, start hers. And while we do that, I'm just going to share some information. Um, so yes, this is the Dolphin Communication Project and today we are going to draw an orca, but the orca is actually in the dolphin family. Um, so the orca or the killer whale is the largest member of the family Delphinidae. Those are the dolphins. And it is found in every ocean. And I would say it's among one of the most recognizable dolphins, right? Uh, so it'll be fun to learn to draw this. Um, orcas have different groups in the ocean um, and scientists give different names to these groups of orcas. So as you're reading about orcas, watching documentaries, um, you may hear that there are groups that live in different areas, they behave differently, they even look different. And scientists call these different orcas ecotypes. In the Northern Pacific Ocean, there are three ecotypes. Offshore, they like to hang out in deep water, they eat fish and maybe even sharks. There are residents, they hang closer to shore. They have smaller ranges, they don't go as far and they love eating salmon and other fish. And then there are the transients, which are sometimes referred to as bigs uh, with two Gs, that's named after a researcher. Mm -hmm. And the transients are the ones that are famous for eating other marine mammals. Residents are endangered or threatened depending on the group. And so humans need to make sure that uh, we start making some changes to help these orcas out. Um, and so with that, I'm going to pass it over to Reina. And as we learn to draw, we'll also learn a bit about the orca. So go ahead, Reina. Thank you so much, Kel. I am so excited to draw an orca today. I think orcas might be my favorite dolphin, maybe my favorite animal in the whole world. Um, so I'm excited to learn a bit more about them too. So I'm, uh, as you can see, I have an example up here and just let me know in the chat uh, if you ever have some trouble seeing what I'm doing. But let's get started. Um, get your piece of paper, get something to write with or draw with. Um, and let's start with drawing the dorsal side of the orca or the orca's back. So we're gonna be drawing this kind of wavy line um, going from its head to its tail. So I'm gonna start this way. There we go. And so kind of like a mountain and then a valley. So that is the dorsal side of the orca. Now, usually um, if I'm drawing like a bottlenose dolphin, I'll then draw the rostrum and then like it would come out a lot, right? Because they have those, those uh, uh, large and uh, point, kind of pointy rostrums. But orcas, they kind of have like a much, a much subtler kind of small little um, bump that is the rostrum up here. So let's do that here. I'm just gonna smooth this out a little bit. Hopefully you can see that. And so I'm just gonna draw the rostrum and it's just a little curve cute little curve like that. Okay, now that we've got the rostrum, we're going to continue the main shape by going to draw the belly or the ventral side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from where I drew that little rostrum, and then I'm gonna just curve it down, um, but I'm going to stop around where uh, this pec fin will be. So I'm just gonna add to my line like this. I actually think I went a little bit farther, but that's okay. Um, and now I'm going to leave a gap for where I want this pectoral fin to be. And I'm going to continue the belly all the way up to where I want the tail to be. 
Um, and what you want to do is as you go up, you want to have the space between uh, the belly and the back to kind of narrow a little bit. So I'm going to leave space um, for the pecs in, maybe, maybe around there. It doesn't matter too much. We can fix it later if we want. And I'm going to bring this line up and then narrow it around where I want uh, the tail flukes to be. So there we go. Kind of looks like a tadpole right now, but we have lots to add. So let's go with the pectoral fin. So we'll start with this one that's closer to us. And I'll start kind of up here, uh, maybe a little bit higher than where I drew the belly. And I'm just going to draw this curve coming down, this leading edge of the pectoral fin here. And um, I'm going to, using a pencil to do it, so that's good. So I'm just going to erase this little belly spot. Um, and now I'll draw the, uh, the trailing edge of the pectoral fin. And so if you look at the shape of this pec fin um, compared to maybe a bottlenose dolphin, you see that it's much more broad. It kind of looks like a paddle. It's a little more rounded at the bottom. So we're going to keep that in mind as we draw the trailing edge. So I'll, I'll draw a curve that um, curves the opposite way from this first line that I drew. So we're going to start around here, curve the other way. And I'm trying not to make it too pointy at the end um, and have it a little bit rounded. I'm going to add these little details up here where kind of the fin joins to the rest of the body. And I'll give you a moment to catch up. And those big paddle-like pec fins, they are much larger compared to smaller dolphins, right? Um, and by the time they are adults, males will have larger pectoral fins than females. So it's one of the ways that researchers can tell males and females apart. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. All right. So we got one pectoral fin in. Let's do the other one. Um, this one's a little bit further. So as you can see, we're, gonna, we're not going to have it come as far down. It's going to look a little bit smaller. So we'll do the same thing. We'll do it um, in front of the one that we just drew and kind of the same thing, um, draw a curve for the leading edge and then a curve going the other way for the trailing edge. There we go. All right, next we will do the flukes. Um, so I'm gonna start with drawing kind of uh, the leading edge of the flukes. So I'll start with drawing these two lines coming out from where, uh, where the body narrows. So we'll go like this. And then do the same thing on the other side. Okay. And so for this part, um, when we draw like the other, the other curves for the other side of the tail loop, I kind of like imagining it. You know how when you draw like a very fancy person, so you're drawing like their face, um, and then maybe this fancy person, maybe he's like the Monopoly man, and he has like a big fancy mustache, and then you kind of go, you kind of go like that. Um, that's kind of what I feel like the, the flutes kind of look like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that I'm extending uh, this line that we drew up here. And then I'm going to draw a dot. And that's like the center point of our flukes. And then we're going to use like the mustache drawing technique and then join from the center dot to uh, the outside of this line that we drew here. So one mustache. And then the other side. And there we have our tail fluke. And like the pectoral fins, the tail fluke sizes are different between males and females. So adult males flukes will be larger than females. And these obvious physical differences between males and females is called sexual dimorphism. Um, smaller dolphins, like the ones that DCP studies, the bottlenose dolphins, Atlantic spotted dolphins, uh, they don't have these kind of obvious sexual dimorphism characteristics. Um, so we need to actually see the dolphins' bellies in order to be sure if they're male or female. Um, orcas have lots of distinctions between the males and females. Yeah, and another one is the body part that we're going to draw next. So next, we're going to draw the, the dorsal fin, which is the fin that's on the back here. Now I'll let uh, Kel tell us a little bit about the sexual dimorphism in the dorsal fin, because now we have some options for what to draw. 
Ah, lovely. Um, so dorsal fins function um, can vary, right? It might be helpful for balance. It might be helpful for thermoregulation, but really a dolphin can survive without its dorsal fin. Um, but for orcas, the general shape of the dorsal fin is different between males and females. Um, so if anyone's listening and is knows which male or female has the taller, pointier dorsal fin. So you can put it into the chat. You can turn to the person in the room with you. Males, so males have taller, more pointed dorsal fins while females have shorter, more rounded dorsal fins. And of course that's all relative. Even the female orca has a very tall dorsal fin, um, but full grown male dorsal fins can be about six feet tall. So it's like an entire human on their that's back. That's pretty big. That's <laughs> like a six foot tall human is even a pretty tall human. <laughs> so yes. Taller that's than pretty me. Wild. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. So based on what Cal just told us, what do you think um, this work is based on its dorsal fin, a male or a female? Give you a moment to think about it. Um, this is a male orca. Uh, so when I look at pictures of orcas, I always kind of think that the male orca looks like it has a bit of a traffic cone on its back. It's very, it's quite symmetrical compared to the female orcas. It's very tall and pointy. Um, so since I drew a male orca here, um, why don't I draw a female dorsal fin here? So you got, you have some options to work with. So for the female one, I'm going to draw a curve. Um, I'm going to make it a little curvier. Um, and it's going to be a little bit shorter than the one uh, we have up here. So I'm going to start um, kind of towards the back of the pectin. And I'm going to start by drawing a curve this way. So you can already see that it's shorter in comparison to the male version. And then the male one and kind of just goes straight down, whereas the female one, it'll look more maybe like a smaller dolphin, where it looks, um, it's a little curvier on uh, the other the other side too and it looks a little bit like uh, the thorn on a rose. So I'm going to draw this curve this way uh, but even so it's still a pretty big dorsal fin huh. All right now um, we have our general orca shape but one of the most striking things about orcas is that they're black and white. So mostly orcas are black kind of on their backs but their bellies are this really bright white. So let's um, draw some of their white markings. So let's start with um, this kind of rostral or French part of the orca. And so orcas don't really have lips, right? But they do have an upper and lower jaw. And so their upper jaw is part of like their dorsal side um, and that's black, but their lower jaw is, bright, uh, is white. So go to where we drew our rostrum at the beginning and I'm going to start um, drawing this, uh, this marking line from the bottom of this bump that we drew here. And so I'm just going to draw a line from the, from the rostrum to somewhere near the pectin. So I'm going to go like this, and then, and you can vary a little bit on um, how you draw the line. It'll look different for um, different individuals. But what I do find is that a lot of orcas, not all, they'll have like a little bit of a bump where the eye is going to be. Um, and so I, sometimes I like putting that in there. And this two-tone coloration, uh, listeners might be familiar with that from other dolphins. So these big dolphins have counter shading just like their smaller cousins and other marine animals. And this, even though it kind of seems to us like it would, it makes them more distinct and more obvious, it actually helps them be less obvious when they're viewed from above or below. Um, and scientists also think that their white patches help break up their size. Um, and perhaps this makes them appear less scary uh, to their prey. All right, let's keep on going with those white markings then. So we also have um, a marking uh, closer to the back side of the orca. Um, and so I always think that this one kind of looks kind of like um, a big wave that you might surf on. And same thing as before, you can, um, can be a little bit liberal with drawing it, but different uh, animals will have slightly different shapes here. 
So I usually start maybe somewhere near where the dorsal fin ends, and then I just go up, we will do a little curve like this, and then back down. And actually, I think, um, Kel, maybe, maybe uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think um, some smaller dolphins that like aren't um, as, uh, like they, they aren't as scary predators as orcas. I think some smaller species also evolve to have like this kind of marking maybe to mimic a bigger predator. And so that uh, maybe they're not as big of a target for maybe sharks or even other orcas. All right, so now we can go on to some of these smaller markings here. Um, I really like this spot, which is called a saddle patch. Um, and I'll let Kel tell us a little bit about it, but what I always really liked about the saddle patch, which I just kind of drew like uh, with like an S here and then brought it back up right behind the dorsal fin. Um, it kind of looks purple um, in some pictures at least, and I've always liked coloring that in um, as a purple spot and then telling people, did you know that some dolphins have purplish markings? Very happy to those of you listening whose favorite color is purple. Um, it has a place everywhere. <laughs> um, but this light white, gray, purplish area behind the dorsal fin is actually unique to each individual. Um, so researchers can use this saddle patch along with the shape and notches in the dorsal fin to recognize individuals. And then they can use photo ID uh, to keep track of those individuals over time. And of course, if you're interested in photo ID, uh, you can find our previously recorded webinar on that topic. Um, but the saddle patch and the dorsal fin characteristics, in addition to being unique at the individual level, uh, they're also different between the ecotypes that we talked about at the beginning of the lesson. Um, so in this sort of totality, uh, scientists can use the general shape and the specific markings um, of the dorsal fin, the saddle patch, all of that together to recognize individuals um, over time. All right. Yeah, so I guess if you're um, on a whale watching tour and you see orcas um, and you want to take a picture of that, maybe you can uh, go back and identify who it is. You, you really want to focus on this area. Yeah. And if you do get a chance to see the fluke, um, if they make a, a deep dive or something, um, it's possible that they also have unique markings there. Um, that type of photo ID is more common in humpback whales, um, but it can be used with orcas as well. That's super cool. All right. Now let's go on to one of the more distinctive parts of the orca, or one of the most distinctive parts, in my opinion, this eye patch. So uh, I, I think also like usually I'll just draw like a bit of an oval. I, I find that it's not usually a perfect oval, so I like adding like some uh, waviness here and there. Uh, but you can kind of decide the shape of your eye patch. And I've decided to do something like this here. Now, when I was when I was a kid and I first saw orcas, uh, I I always thought that this was the eye of the orca. Um, Kel, is that true? That is not the eye, but I bet it could trick someone who's trying to go after the orca. Yeah, I think especially, <laughs> Nicole just said, I thought that too. Yeah, I definitely thought that. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I, I read that, um, especially when orcas are hunting maybe prey like seals or dolphins, maybe penguins, one of the ways that they might defend themselves. Um, and I think a lot of animals do this with like predators like sharks too, but maybe they'll try attacking the eye, right? And that'll kind of like stun the predator and they can make a getaway. But um, the way, like, just like it tricked me back in the day, um, maybe when the orca attacks them, they might, they might think that this is where they should go for, um, and that's less effective than actually getting their actual eye. But now that we know that that's not the actual eye of the orca, let's draw its actual eye. So usually it, it's a little bit, um, 
uh, in front of the eye patch. And it's quite small compared to the actual eye patch and compared to, I think, other dolphin eyes, like in relation to their huge body size. Um, so remember when we drew this like little bump here uh, for approximately where the eye would be? We'll just put a little eye up here. Um, and I usually do that just by making a circle. And then I'll fill in most of the circle with the pupil, but I like leaving like a little bit of white just so, you know, you can, it, it looks a little bit cuter and it makes it look like the orca is looking in a certain direction. Now we're pretty much almost done our orca. It actually looks like an orca now. Um, the one last thing that I like to add is of course the blowhole, it has to breathe. So that'll be just in front of the dorsal fin. Um, and I'll just put um, a little line here for its blowhole. And there we go. We've drawn an orca together. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and after, um, feel free to give it to give it um, some colors um, and maybe put some purple in the saddle patch if you want. Thank you so much, Miss Reyna. Um, I hope that everyone enjoyed that drawing lesson. And if you'd like, after you finish your drawing, um, if you want to color it or not color it, um, draw the scene around it, the ocean, uh, maybe take this drawing lesson and apply it to a spy hopping. Uh, orca, something like that, uh, please do send us your completed drawings. You can submit them to us at, uh, on social media um, or uh, email them to us at info at dcpmail.org. Um, and so we'll, if we have any questions, we'd be happy to take them. Um, and then, and I will just share a little bit more um, about some of the places where you can find more information on ORCAs. So up on the screen is a specific section of the NOAA website um, and also uh, whale research um, that's done in the Pacific Northwest if you want to find out more information. Um, if you haven't caught all of our other webinars, you can listen to the recordings directly on our website under the education tab, um, or you can also listen to them on YouTube at Dolphin Communication Project. And this was a dolphin lesson. So we say it's geared towards ages um, six to 13, but of course it's also geared to the young at heart. Um, and we will have um, just two more dolphin lessons uh, before we take a break for the summer. And then on Thursdays, we have deep dives, which are geared towards an older audience. Um, our next deep dive is um, May 27th. Um, and we're gonna be learning about a specialized feeding technique um, in the Florida Keys. And then if you still haven't had your dolphin fill, uh, you can tune into our podcast. Those episodes are available for free directly on the DCP website or wherever you get your podcasts. And also on the DCP website under that education tab are, are our kids science activities. Um, and those are PDFs that are free to download. Um, there are even more than what you see listed here, including a coloring page um, of a completed orca that Miss Reina did for us. Um, if you wanna skip the drawing part and go straight to the coloring part. And of course, we're a nonprofit, um, so we are thrilled to offer these programs at no cost to you, but we also appreciate your support um, if you're able to and choose to. Uh, you can adopt a dolphin from our wild study group in Bimini. You can become a member, get a t-shirt. Um, you can even join us in the field. Um, and if you're listening to this in May or June of 2021, uh, you can join us in Bimini, the Bahamas this July, um, or just check out our website for future opportunities. And there you can see uh, where to find us um, and stay in touch. Um, so I will get rid of that um, and just encourage folks to learn more about dolph uh, dolphins in general and orcas specifically. Um, in the past, they were under threat. They did have pressure from humans and commercial hunting um, and even culling to protect fisheries. Um, but today, uh, the killer whale populations, the groups that are under the most threat, um, 
are under threat because of food limitations, uh, chemical contaminates, disturbances from vessel traffic and sound, um, things that humans have control over, um, and efforts by humans to establish critical habitat, um, set regulations, restore prey stocks um, are essential to conserving uh, the orcas out there. Um, and that information is all from NOAA. Um, so again, you can head to their website if you want to learn more. Um, did we have any other questions? No? Alrighty. Well, thank you, Ms. Reyna. Um, we appreciate your time and your artistic skill always. Um, it is a very good thing for all involved that I do not have to lead the drawing lessons. <laughs> so with that, we will sign off and thank you everyone. Hi, Ms. Suna, thank you. Bye.